right, let's get started into chapter four. Uh, we're going to first look at these transparencies that are in your textbook. These transparencies, we're just going to go through them very quickly because they're very easy to understand. Uh, the orange section, before you put the first transparency over, the orange section, as it says right there, is the unadjusted trial balance. So now, those are the numbers from the very beginning of the textbook, the, the journal entries that we did, the transactions that we did at the beginning. Then in the last chapter, we did adjustments, and that's what this red transparency page is. So when you turn that over, there are the adjustments placed into our worksheet. Once you have the adjustments, you can then adjust those unadjusted balance to get the blue. And there is our adjusted trial balance. Now that we have our adjusted trial balance, we can now prepare our financial statements. Now, the brown isn't really necessary, but the textbook does it, so it's just dividing it into the income statement and the balance sheet and the statement of retained earnings and the statement of owner's equity. So when you prepare those statements, you can, you can move these numbers over into the brown columns if you'd like. Or if you're good enough at this, you can just use the numbers straight from the blue column. That's what I prefer to do because the brown column is just an extra step. But anyway, if you do the brown columns, there's the income statement, the first two, and then the second two columns are the balance sheet and statement of owner's equity. Now, they're not going to balance because, you know, before in the blue columns, they did balance. But now that we've moved the numbers into four columns, they're not going to balance. But their differences are going to be equal. If you look in the green, you can see the second to bottom column or row you can see that 3,785. You can see that number there. That's the net income. That's the difference between the two columns. So if you plug those in on each side, then they'll balance. Okay? And then the next page, it just shows you how you put all the numbers into the financial statements. So make sure you understand how this worksheet works and how it moves into the financial statements on the next page. Your income statement, statement of owner's equity, and balance sheet. Okay, now another part of the chapter is the closing entries. Okay, it's the end of the year, we're all done, we've prepared our financial statements, but revenues, expenses, and withdrawals all have balances in them. Those accounts need to be zeroed out because next year we have to start at zero with revenues, zero with expenses, and zero with withdrawals. Because if you look here, I have certain accounts here. Revenues, expenses, and withdrawals are temporary accounts. Assets, liabilities, and our capital account are called permanent accounts because we don't close those out. Their balances carry over from one period to the next period. But revenues, expenses, and withdrawals, their balances do not carry over because we want to know what the profit is, for example, in 2008. Okay, great. We can do that. We can look at revenues, expenses. If we want to know the profit for 2009, we don't want 2008 numbers in there. We have to zero 2008 out and get 2009 starting from zero and then start building up those accounts. So I wrote some accounts here. Cash, accounts payable, fees, sales, wage expense, utility expense, and some balances. These accounts, some of them need to be closed. Now, cash is an asset. That balance will carry over, so we don't have to do anything with cash. Accounts payable. Well, that's a liability. We're not going to eliminate that. We wish we could. We wish we could just wash out that $5,000 that we owe, but we can't because the people that we owe that $5,000 to are going to want their money next year. We can't just zero the account out unless we pay it off. Now, fees is revenue. Sales is a revenue account. Wage expense and utility expense are expense accounts. So these four accounts do need to be closed out. And I'm going to add one more. I'm going to put WD withdrawal account 3000. So our withdrawal account also needs to be closed. These five accounts are temporary accounts. They need to be closed out. Now the first step in closing out is to close out our revenues. Okay? Revenues have credit balances, so we have to debit them. So I'm going to debit fees fees earned and sales. Fees earned is 10,000, so I'm going to debit that 10,000. And sales is 100,000. We're going to close it out to a new account called income summary. It's just a temporary account. We're just going to use it temporarily. Income summary. We're just going to put it in there temporarily. So I'm going to have a little T account here called income summary. And now I've got 110,000 
So step one is to close out revenues to income summary. Step two is to close out expenses to income summary. Well, I'm going to put down income summary. Our expenses total 65000 so that's going to be our debit to income summary. Now we've got to actually close out wage expense and utility expense. Wage expense is 50000 Utility expense is 15000 Now notice I'm crediting the expenses because expenses have debit balances. Expenses have debit balances. So to close them out, I have to credit them. So now wage expense and utility expense is zero because I just credited them. So now they had a debit. I credited them that dollar amount. They're zero. And I put it all into income summary. So if you look over here, hopefully this is in the picture, income summary now has 65,000 on the debit side, 110 on the credit side. Okay, so that leaves us 45,000 in income summary. There's 45,000 in income summary. What is that 45,000? That's our net income. Our revenue account minus our expense accounts gives us our net income. So our net income has now been put into income summary. Well, that's the third step now. We have to close out income summary and put it into, where do you think? Well, let's close out income summary. To close it out, we'll put 45,000 debit. So now that zeroes out the 45,000 in income summary. Income summary is now zero. We're gonna put it into the capital account because who who owns that net income? Who owns the profit of the company? The owner. So we're going to put it into the owner's capital account. Okay, And that's exactly what the statement of owner's equity does, right? When we're doing the statement of owner's equity, we put net income into the capital account, right? Well, we have to actually do it. That's what this whole closing process is doing. It's putting that net income into the capital account just like we've done already in the statement of owner's equity. And then step four, what else do we do in the statement of owner's equity? Don't we reduce it by the withdrawal? Okay, we do. So we actually have to close out the withdrawal account. The withdrawal account, as I said right here, withdrawal has 3,000. So the withdrawal account has a debit balance, so we have to credit the withdrawal account, 3000 okay? So this credit to the withdrawal account closes us out, and then we debit the capital account. This debit to the capital account will reduce the capital account, just like in the statement of owner's equity, when we subtract out the withdrawal from the, the owner's equity account, from the capital account. That's what this is doing. So basically, these two entries right here, entry three and entry four, are just doing exactly what we've always done in our statement of owner's equity. So when you're going through in the textbook looking at their example, they show the closing entries, the closing entries from these transparency sheets, they're showing the closing entries. Follow along, see how the balance after you're done with the closing entries equals the statement of owner's equity that you already prepared. Okay, well that's the, that's the chapter. It's not too difficult in a chapter. Some students get a little bit confused, but it is a four-step process. The textbook does a very good job. Hopefully you've understood what I've done with different numbers, but I think it all makes sense for the reason why we do it. It's so that our capital account equals our statement of owner's equity capital account balance. Okay, good luck with the chapter.